On September 5th, 2007, Apple introduced one of the sleekest multi-touch screen devices to the world and everyone fell in love with it. It wasn't the iPhone, it was the iPod Touch. The iPhone was introduced months earlier on June 29, 2007, so all eyes were on the iPhone and not the iPod Touch. Although, the iPod Touch was the underdog and was about to show the world it was on the come up. Before the iPhone was introduced, the iPod dominated the markets and everyone wanted one. The sleek, impressive design, down to the way you could easily manage your library on iTunes, the iPod Classic, Nano, and even Shuffle were wildly popular and was on every kid's Christmas wish list. Everything changed when the iPhone was introduced. Steve Jobs even said it himself when he demonstrated the introduction of the iPhone on that stage that to this day is one of Steve Jobs' most iconic moments. A revolutionary mobile phone breakthrough internet communicator, and widescreen iPod with touch controls. A widescreen iPod with touch controls. So the iPhone essentially cannibalized the sales of Apple's most important product line that made up Apple go from a computer company to a wide-scale consumer electronic brand that to this day is recognized all over the world for innovation and design. So what use does the iPod Touch have today in 2019 when the iPhone is an iPod Touch plus it is always connected and in an age of streaming, it's hard to make an argument for purchasing an iPod Touch, especially when Apple killed the beloved iPod Classic line in 2014 and the iPod Shuffle Nano met the same fate when they were discontinued in July of 2017. Perhaps the iPod Touch is the next to meet that fate despite new recent rumors that an iPod Touch 7th gen is in the works. Let's take a look back through memory lane and start from the beginning up to now and relive the history of the iPod Touch. <laughs> Before the release of the iPhone, Apple had sold close to 40 million iPods worldwide. That's insane. At this point, the iPods were revolutionizing how we interacted with media players and played a big part in shaping the music industry into what it is today. Before I move on with some of the history of the iPod Touch, here is Jaden from How To Apple giving some of his thoughts and personal experience with the iPod Touch. Guys, his channel is amazing. You definitely have to go check it out. Jaden, take this one away, my guy. Thanks, Juan. I appreciate that, bro. And as he said, I'm Jaden with How to Apple. Nice to meet you guys. And talking about the iPod, that device will always have a special place in my heart because if it wasn't for the iPod, I probably wouldn't be an Apple user today. So growing up, I was always a Windows user, you know, using those little AOL CDs that you got to get dial up with and all that stuff on a month to month basis. So yeah, that shows my background. Now that was also back in the time when the online games was really big, like AddictiveGames.com. Those little small games that you go into online, you got to use a little proxy server at school to get onto those. Well, we used to play those a lot. And the iPod Touch, since it had the App Store, actually brought those games to your MP3 player. So it really hit big with the younger generation. So I decided, let me go ahead and get one of these iPod Touches. I went and bought the second generation iPod and having all of my little games right on my mp3 player with all of my music and everything and really there was nothing that was that advanced that looked that cool that played music and played games so it was because of that i went ahead and got rid of my blackberry went and got an iphone and because apple did such a good job with a phone i said what can they do with a computer that's when i got the macbook but back to the ipod it really was a game changer because not only was it a good music device and a good little gaming device the web browsing on it was beast because it would render a web page pretty much how it looked on the desktop computer. And back then we used MySpace trying to make our pages look all cool, whatever. Well, you were able to look at it right on an iPod. That also led to some other things you can look at on an iPod too, but we won't talk about all of that. But man, overall, I love the iPod. I think it does have a place in the market, um, especially for younger kids that may just want to, you know, their parents don't want to buy them a whole entire iPad. I know older people, we probably want an iPhone because you always have that connection, but hey, maybe Apple will do something with this iPod and make that mess look cool as I don't know what, but let's find out. Juan, go ahead and take it away. I just want to give a quick shout out to Jaden. Guys, y'all have to go check out my Brody's YouTube channel. Head over to How To Apple Without The E. He is an amazing guy and puts out top quality content. I'll link his channel in the description below. So now transitioning into the history of the iPod Touch. On September 5th, 2007, the iPod Touch first generation was released. 
At this point, I was only 11 and didn't follow Apple all too much since I was a broke boy, so no point in drooling over Apple's devices when I knew for a fact I'd never be able to afford them. But when I started to see people with iPod touches, I was blown away. The iPhone had already been out, but it was less common to see iPhones as one, you had to be a big baller to have one. Two, they were exclusive only to AT&T at the time. And three, the iPhone was a first generation product that ran on the ever slow edge network. So seeing an original iPhone at the time for me, like if you had one, I assumed you rolled with Bill Gates and Steve Jobs for real. The iPod touch was touted as an iPhone without the contract and people were sold on the idea. It offered basically the same design, the multi-touch display, which believe it or not, at the time was an enormous deal. And of course it being able to connect to Wi-Fi. It did have some downsides though, as the original iPod Touch had no internal speaker, it had no camera, and of course no phone features. It sold for $299 for an 8GB model, $399 for a 16GB model, and $499 for a whopping 32GB model. Yes kids, 32GB back then was a buttload of internal memory. Next up, the iPhone 3G was introduced with a plethora of new features, and naturally, the successor to the increasingly popular iPod Touch was updated as well. Apple released the second generation iPod Touch on September 9th, 2008 at an event in San Francisco geared around music. It added volume buttons on the side. Yeah, Apple messed up bad. Like, why would you not put volume buttons on the original iPod? Like, how can someone be that stupid? It's a music player. But anyway, yeah, super important feature, volume buttons. It was ever so slightly thinner. Finally had an internal speaker, a bad speaker, but it had one, and finally introduced the app store. The only real downside was the lack of Bluetooth and that infamous stainless steel back that scratched the minute you laid your hands on it, but man, this one. This device brings back so many memories. This was my first Apple product ever, and I was in love. I caressed my iPod, took extremely good care of it, and praised its design for looking just downright gorgeous. I do have some sour memories, because I remember I was finessed in high school in gym class, so some girl asked me to let her borrow my iPod, and my dumb ass was like, bet, I got you. Come to find out, at the end of gym class, it mysteriously vanished, and now I was out in iPod Touch. Man, when my mom found out, first thing she did is snitch to my dad about it. All I remember was crying and on my knees begging for forgiveness. More of the story, I got my ass beat that day. I sure did learn my lesson though, but that was my fault. I really did miss that iPod, and so I had to watch from the sidelines as everyone else enjoyed their beloved iPod Touch as these devices were selling like hotcakes. It seemed nothing was ever going to get in the way of the iPod Touch's success. It is important to note that Apple did what they should be doing today. Instead of increasing prices, they decreased the entry price to start at $229 for the 8GB version. Still though, in 2008, $229 was a lot of money, and I can see why my parents were so upset at my dumb A year passed, and on September 9th, 2009, Steve Jobs was up on stage once again to introduce the 3rd gen iPod Touch. On the outside, the 3rd gen was near identical to the 2nd gen. This generation was all about internal improvements. Apple once more made the iPod more accessible to people by dropping the entry price of the 8 gig model down to $199. Now, it seemed, the iPod Touch was everywhere despite the growing popularity of the iPhone. I think this was still the age of LimeWire, so this was around the time that people's computers were infested with viruses all in the name of free music. I didn't do this though. I have always been a law-abiding citizen and a good kid and would never dream of illegally downloading music. That's because I physically couldn't because I was iPodless. I'm telling you, still salty to this day. Still, the third gen offered slight improvements. It had increased capacity starting at 32 gigs and went up to an unprecedented 64 gigs with them coming in at 299 and 399 respectively. In typical fashion, it had a faster processor and had voice controls. Still lacked the digital camera, but with the updated processor, Apple touted this as an exceptional way to game. The App Store was flourishing, and games like Angry Birds, Fruit Ninja, and Doodle Jump were dominating the App Store in terms of downloads. Then, the iPod Touch 4th generation was brought to light. It was iPod lovers' dreams come true. The iPod Touch 4th gen saw a hardware redesign, and it looked amazing. Couple that with the fact that it now featured the new Retina display featured on the iPhone 4 and two cameras, one on the back and FaceTime camera on the front. Man, everyone wanted the newest iPod Touch. Its new design was radical, but in a good way. As a matter of fact, the angles were actually pretty sharp. So sharp, you could chop cucumbers with that bit, man, no lie. I remember even raising the volume was a bit hard because of how thin and tapered the device was on the side. Slick almost cut myself once on it. How would I know this? This is because my parents were tired of roasting me and I guess they genuinely felt bad. So they were able to get me a new iPod Touch on the condition that I'd be slightly more intelligent and not get finesse like a dumb 
Xbox anymore. Well, you already know, I protected the iPod with my life. In my opinion, this was the height of the iPod Touch's popularity. It included Apple's fast A4 chip, which was also in the newest iPhones and was blazing fast for the time. Everything about the iPod Touch was so much better than the last. The speaker was better. We now had cameras, the new faster A4 chip. It was lighter, slimmer, sexier, a retina display. Man, those were the days. I love my iPod Touch 4th gen. Sadly, tragedy struck and it shook me to my core. I was in weight training class and I thought it was a brilliant idea to lay my iPod Touch next to the guys benching the clips while I benched 345s. Well, long story short, a dumbbell fell right on my iPod and completely shattered my screen. Boy, I remember going to my cousin's house that day because I knew I was going to catch the hands when my mom found out. Like, I was scared. Ironically, my mom caught on pretty quick that I no longer carried around my iPod when before it was stuck to me like glue. And once again, yup, she snitched. Long story short, I got my ass beat again. Like, I thought I had learned my lesson, but I guess not, and these were some sad times as my iPod was basically my phone at that time. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of you guys did the same. You downloaded one of those apps that gave you a random number and you were able to text only when connected to Wi-Fi. I lost all my size that day, man. Sad facts. Before we move on to the 5th gen, Jaden, why don't you take this one away? Thanks, bro. So the iPod Touch 5th generation was released in October of 2012. Unfortunately, this is where things started to go down for the iPod, mainly because in September of 2012, a month before, the iPhone 5 came out. And at this time, of course, the smartphone market was booming. And if you remember, the iPhone 5, when it came out, had a bigger screen than the iPhone 4 and 4S. So there was even more incentive to upgrade to the next level, whether you get an iPod 5th generation or the iPhone 5. Unfortunately, with the iPod, you were limited to your Wi-Fi accessibility. Well, with the iPhone, you had unlimited access and you didn't have to worry about losing connection when you got on the school bus for those kids out there that had iPods. But even though that was a good reason to go with an iPhone over the iPod, Apple used the tactic of making the iPod in multiple colors this time that were not available with the iPhone. So now you got the younger generation that wants to flex in front of their friends with all their cool looking colors have more of an incentive to go with the iPod over the iPhone. Now, I personally think that tactic was pretty brilliant and even natural because, I mean, we look at the baboon, it uses this nice red tush to attract its mates. Apple wanted to use those nice, brilliant colors to attract some new customers. Now, it is important to note that in 2011, there was no new iPod released. However, with the iPod fifth generation, Apple did some pretty cool things with it to try to match that of the iPhone 5, such as the screen size. Um, they got rid of the 30 pin connector and introduced a lightning port on it. They had a better battery. Uh, they doubled the RAM as well, you know, because it was what, 256 before, and now I think they upgraded it to two, I'm sorry, 512 megabytes. So there were some pretty cool things that they did to try to beef this thing up. And they, they even used the A5 processor, which at the time was blazing. Now it'd be crawling. However, Apple tried and gotta give them props. But although the iPod Touch did look pretty cool with the iodized aluminum, the colors and the stainless steel, stuff like that, it was only cool for the first three seconds that you pulled it out of the box because it scratched really easy. And really, the iPod fifth generation, just it just expanded on the iPod fourth generation's problems and flaws. And that's where we see the unfortunate crumbling of the iPod while the iPhone rose to fame. So there's your briefing on the iPod 5th generation. Go ahead and take it away, Juan. And now we come to the present, to the iPod Touch 6th generation. Although it's not exactly as modern as you'd think, Apple wouldn't update the iPod Touch until July of 2015, four years after its predecessor. At this point, sales of the iPod Touch have plummeted quite drastically. Once revered as probably the biggest gadget on the planet, was now a shadow of its former self in terms of sales, despite the iPod Touch being upgraded with massive internal gains and other improvements. The iPod Touch sold an estimated 35 million units in 2012, and falling all the way down to 14.3 million in 2014. The iPod Touch was slacking hard in terms of sales, but Apple persisted and decided to upgrade the beloved iPod Touch. You could tell Apple didn't care much about the iPod Touch as it wasn't released during the fall, but rather at a press conference. Not even a keynote for it. 
Now, one of my personal speculations is that Apple purposely waited for this moment, as Apple Music recently had rolled out months prior and it made perfect sense to release a new iPod Touch. The new 6th gen iPod rocks an A8 chip built on 64-bit architecture with an M8 motion coprocessor, which Apple promised would boost graphical performance by up to 10 times more than the previous model. It featured an 8 megapixel iSight camera capable of shooting HD video at 120 frames per second in 720p for slow-mo shots. Externally, it removed the shiny silver button for the wrist strap, so I guess fitness wasn't as big as a focus for this generation. We also had a new selection of bright colors and have upgraded to one full gigabyte of RAM, which is nice for a device now touted as being a gaming device. Storage was bumped to max 128 gigs and can now be purchased for 199 for the 32 gig version or 299 for 128 gigs. Apart from that, no drastic differences were made to the iPod Touch. This generation was basically just an internal spec bump. And here we are today in 2019 and Apple still selling the iPod Touch on their website. It's sad because when Apple reports their earnings, the iPod Touch was the big dog when it came to sales numbers and now it has been pushed to the side in the other category when releasing sales figures. As a matter of fact, Apple no longer has the iPod category on their website as a subheader. You have to click on music and find it there. Honestly, it's quite sad to see how much an iconic tech device faded into obscurity. I'm sure I'm not the only one with good memories they've shared along with their iPods. However, it might not be the end for the iPod Touch. As of January of 2019, rumors have been spinning up that Apple low-key is working on an iPod Touch 7th generation and honestly, I really hope it comes into fruition because I feel the iPod Touch does have a niche and a certain demographic it is trying to reach. That audience mainly being younger kids who aren't quite ready for a cell phone. It is the perfect way to introduce new customers into the Apple ecosystem. Think about it, as long as they're hooked up to Wi-Fi, they can run that iMessage, group chats, FaceTime, send snaps, or browse Instagram or whatever. In an age where social media is taking over, the iPod Touch is a prime candidate for any younger client to be invested in Apple's walled garden. You can't deny, for a vast majority of y'all, the iPod Touch, or any iPod for that matter, was your first Apple product, and I think Apple is trying to keep up with that trend to attract a younger, newer generation into their line of products. And even if Apple doesn't update the iPod Touch 7th gen, the current 6th gen is plenty fast. Yeah, it may lag on certain applications here and there, but it can get the job done just right. Additionally, I was surprised when I took it out of my drawer after like a year and like, what? This screen is so small, but that can actually be a good thing. I have an iPhone XS Max with the smart battery case on, so my phone be looking like a dang calculator. And to have this small, thin, 4-inch iPhone without the phone just felt so cool. It was like a blast from the past, man. Lately, I've been taking it to the gym instead of carrying around my calculator, I mean, my iPhone XS Max, and I love it. Plus, it has a headphone jack. But let's face it, it's a really hard argument to make, especially when your iPhone can do absolutely everything the iPod can do and more. At $199, you could probably get AirPods, make an extra payment to your car, ball out and flex at the club, and much more. I think it has its niche, but once you have a smartphone, especially an iPhone, the argument to pick up an iPod Touch becomes harder and harder and harder just because the iPhone interacts so well with the Apple ecosystem. The iPod Touch is just that tech product we'd all hate to see go, but man, I'm not sure. It's going to come down to the wire. I believe it has two outcomes by the end of this year. Either Apple releases a 7th gen iPod, which I think would be absolutely dope, or it follows the footsteps of its fallen brothers and gets discontinued and meets the same fate as the Nano, Classic, and Shuffle. But I'm not sure, reports have been showing that it is highly likely a new 7th gen iPod is about to be released, so I'm super excited. Until then, we can ravish in the nostalgia this device brought all of us. Back when the only way to text your sides was to be connected to Wi-Fi. Back when the App Store was beginning to boom and games like Angry Birds and Fruit Ninja were dominant the charts. Back when Apple Music wasn't a thing and the only way to legally obtain music on Apple devices was through iTunes so you could jam to your heart's content anywhere you went. I hope the iPod Touch will get resurrected with an iPhone 10 style redesign but that may be asking for way too much. For all we know the iPod Touch is on its last legs. The iPod Touch changed the way we interacted with music. The iPod Touch has a special place in the hearts of many of us and only time will tell what Apple decides to do with the iPod Touch. Whatever they decide, we'll all remember the iPod Touch and remember all the joy it brought to all of us. I really hope everyone enjoyed this video. It took me a really long time to make it and research it and was thrilled to make my first collaboration project with How To Apple. He is a huge Apple fan just like me so definitely head over to his channel and make sure you subscribe. I'm telling you my bro has some lit content. 
As always guys, subscribe so you don't miss any of my content and follow me on social media so you can vote for what video you want to see next and also see what upcoming giveaways are in the works. Thank you all so much for stopping by and I'll catch you on the next one.